to uh, Hatfield Congregational Church and welcome to Daylight Savings Time. I'm glad that you guys made note of the change. It's not always easy to get adjusted when we lose an hour of sleep, but uh, welcome a little bit earlier here today. We have uh, two flower um, offerings today and the one in the sanctuary is offered by the Pay family and that is offered in memory of Bev Pay on the anniversary of her birth. The flowers here on the, uh, the piano are offered by Carol Hopkins, and they are offered in memory of her mother, Margaret Pauline Hopkins, who passed away recently. Um, also, brother Paul Randall Hopkins, grandmother Anna Itchner, and uncle Walter H. Itchner. So we thank the Hopkins and Pay family for their donations of the flowers. Also, if anyone would like to make a uh, donation for, or take, sign up for one of our Sunday morning chat and coffees, the uh, sign-up sheet is over there. If you'd like to let us know one of your favorite Sunday hymns is, again, the sign-up sheet is over by that entrance of the church. If you'd like to make an Easter flower donation uh, or an offering of a lily or a tulip, please see June Lampern uh, right there after our service. And uh, the donations of the uh, flowers, they go to our shut-ins, but all of those have been taken care of. They'll be delivered um, on Easter Sunday to the shut-ins. Those have all been uh, taken care of. So if you do want to offer a lily or a tulip, and then after Easter service, you can take those with you uh, to adorn your home. If anyone would like to purchase gift cards from Stop and Shop or from Big Y, please see Linda um, after services this morning. And the church earns 5% on all of those sales. And next to her is Mary McCarthy. She's accepting donations for the Relay for Life for Hampshire County. And luminary forms are also available for her. Also, we are starting to tape our services to air on public access television today. So today is the first day. Uh, the camera is right there. That will be airing on Hatfield public access television and also on Frontier Cable Public Access Television as well. So Hatfield Public Access and Frontier Public Access Television. So right there is the camera. So if you don't want to be on the camera that won't be panning around. Uh, the only ones that will be involved with the camera will be up here in the sanctuary and uh, the young people for the children's sermon. And as I mentioned last weekend, I think Anita has distributed the permission slips. If any of the young people do not want to be um, on that taped uh, public access program, uh, please let me know and it's a simple matter of editing that out of the church service. Uh, so we are looking forward to our taping the services to reach out to the Hatfield community and uh, that will be taking place every other weekend. So also today is our one great hour of sharing collection and uh, it is based on more than we can imagine from Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 where it says now to God be the glory by the work by the, by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or even imagine. And so they go on to say that we can feel overwhelmed by how much needs to be done to make our world a better place. And this can wear us down so that we think that there is nothing we can do to make this world any better. Hopelessness can set in with a fear that what little we can do won't have any real impact. But there is hope. We are that hope. Our gifts today on this One Great Hour of Sharing Sunday become part of a loving legacy in ways that we can't even foresee. Our gifts become blessings to people that we don't even know and blesses us in ways that we can't even expect. We can make a difference beyond what we can imagine. So as we do accept that donation a little bit later in our service, please be as generous as you can. Wednesday is the next of our Lenten discussions. It will be hosted by the Waitley Congregational Church at 7 p.m. And the presenter will be the Reverend Alan M. Comstock of the Montague Congregational Church. On that same night, the trustees will be here at 7 p.m. On Super Saturday, which is this coming Saturday, uh, the Massachusetts Conference will meet at Minichaw High School in Wilbraham. And we have five people attending this year, Betsy Ryder, Anthony Tracia, Amy Novak, Mark Jalot, and myself. And so that will be taking place basically all day on Saturday. And I would like to visit our parishioners in their homes, so if I have not yet had that opportunity, please do contact me. And are there any other announcements from the congregation? Yes. The uh, men's thank you breakfast is coming up on March 25th, on Sunday. All proceeds this year are going to be on the state passage. So if there's any uh, gentlemen that would like to help us out, um, you can have to turn. So pancake breakfast on Palm Sunday. Um, Mary and I took up the penis for sale for three dollars, and on the back is a gift certificate for a free appetizer <coughs> at the uh, Texas Roadhouse, which is quite best compared to three dollars. But this is all for cancer and related to life. Thank 
that you would have done. Anything else? Any other announcements? Oh, yes, Mark. Um, my name is Mark Gillette. If you don't know me already, I send out the emails from the church for various announcements and events that come up. So if your name is not on the email list and you'd like to have it there, just please track me down and let me know, and uh, then you'll be receiving um, periodic bulletins. So thank you. Any other announcements? Seeing none, the prelude for this morning's worship is Reminiscence.
I just, my head just hasn't grasped this uh, daylight savings time yet. I'm a little bit kind of wobbly with that, but I did hear the, uh, the choir practicing some of the songs that they will be uh, singing a little bit later in the service, and that will definitely wake us up. So looking forward to that. So if you would now, please join me by turning to the bulletin for our call to worship. Light has entered our world in Jesus. That light was lifted high on the cross so that all who believe in him may have eternal life. Let us live in the light of Christ's self-giving love. Let us work to help spread the message of such a Savior. We give thanks to Jesus for all that he did during his lifetime. And we rejoice in his unconditional love for us all. By God's word, we are saved. By Jesus' mercy, we are made whole. In his cross, we see an example to follow. join together in our unison prayer. Loving Savior of infinite patience, we call on you once more, trusting in your generous kindness. Too often amid the complexities of our lives, we have forgotten to set aside time to be still before you. We have forgotten to listen for your word. We have chosen darkness instead of light, and yet you need us where we are. With grateful hearts, we gather for worship and long to be worthy of your trust in us. Lead us and pray in your holy ways. Amen. And now, may we turn to the red hymnal number 171, There is a Green Hill Far Away.
uh, young people in attendance to come forward if they would like. How you doing on this day with one less hour of sleep? I'm already worried about sunrise service on Easter. I lost one hour of sleep and my head's a little bit fuzzy. What's going to happen when I'm out at 6.30 in the cold? But anyway, today is our one great hour of sharing collection. And on that one great hour of sharing collection, we ask people in the little town of Hatfield to make an offering so that we can help people that we will probably, or most definitely, never see, never know, never hear a thank you from. And so that's a kind of important Christian message. And when you go downstairs to Sunday school, you're going to hear about Jesus and the uh, time that he comes together for his last supper with his disciples. And one of the first things that he does is he washes their feet. So Jesus becomes a servant to the disciples. And in that message of service and that example of being humble and giving to others, he says, that is my new command to you, that you love one another. Any of you got pets? You got a pet? What's your pet? A what? A bearded dragon? I don't know. What, does a bearded dragon stay in a cage? Or what is, what is, is it stays in a tank? So it doesn't kind of go out and roam around the house or anything like that? You let a bearded dragon out in the house. <laughs> All right. If I ever come over to your house, you'll let me know that there's a bearded dragon on okay? All right. He doesn't what? He doesn't bite. A bearded dragon that doesn't bite? I gotta see what a beard. I'm gonna remind me when I go home. I gotta go home and see what a bearded dragon is. It doesn't sound cute and comfy and furry, though. I'll tell you. Do you, do you snuggle with the bearded dragon? Oh, good. All right. What do you got? A dog and a fish. A dog and a fish. What's your dog's name? Tonka. And you don't happen to have that that dum dum turkey, though, do you? That's your neighbor, right? Dum dum the turkey. Okay. Well, I've got a dog. My dog's name is Mason. And Mason likes to go out for walks. And so I either take him through this cornfield that is right next to my house, or I go up around and there's like a field up on a hill. And when I'm out with the dog, the dog is, you know, I'm looking all around, it looks beautiful, but the dog has got his nose down to the ground and he's following something that I can't see. He's pulling me this way, he's pulling me that way, and I can't see what is so enthralling to that dog, but something has really got Mason's attention. The other thing that my dog does is in the middle of the night, my wife Sharon and I are sound asleep, and all of a sudden he'll just start barking, and he's, he has a bed right next to our bed. So in the middle of the night, out of a sound sleep, Mason will bark, 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 just like that. Scares the bejesus out of us. So you wake up out of this sleep, and that dog is barking. The first time he did it, I didn't know if somebody was trying to break in or whatever, but the, after he did it like the fifth time, and the hundredth time, and the two hundredth time, you kind of get used to it that this is what the dog does. And I tell him, there's nothing, I hear nothing, I see nothing, but he sees and hears stuff. So I'm talking to my neighbor, Pat, she lives across the field. I'm taking the dog out for a walk, and she says to me, did you hear that coyotes last night? You know what coyotes are? You ever hear coyotes at night? Yeah, and they're wild dogs though, right? And they make some really loud noises. But I didn't hear the coyotes, but my dog heard the coyotes. So I'm yelling at my dog, there's nothing out there, but he hears the coyotes and he's trying to say, hey, stay away from the house. So he's doing what he's supposed to do. So my dog is smelling stuff that I can't see. He's, he's hearing stuff that I can't hear. And I know now that we had that snowstorm that he's following tracks in the snow because now I can see the, the tracks where that whatever animal was were out there in the snow. So he sees things that I can't see. He smells things that I can't um, smell. And he hears things that I can't hear. And that's kind of the message that Jesus is going to try to teach us today. That we are supposed to love one another no matter who the other is. And we have to love them even if we may never ever see them. Everybody is our neighbor. And that's the message of one great, or the Sunday, what is it again? One great hour of sharing. We're supposed to try to think of everybody as our neighbor. And we're supposed to try to do for them as if they are part of our very own family. We can't see it. We can't hear it. We may not be able to smell it like a dog. But Jesus sees all of us 
as one great family. And we have to try to take care of each other. And that's that message you're going to learn about downstairs in Sunday school when Jesus washes the feet of his disciples. That's the message that we're going to try and share here on this one great hour of sharing Sunday that all of us are family. Okay? So, guys, enjoy your Sunday school and try and stay awake down there on this daylight savings time. Okay? Have a good one. singing Lift High the Cross today, and we'd like to invite you to open your blue hymnals to page 108, and we'd like you to sing along with us, but just on a couple important parts. So they're going to open with the melody of the refrain, that's the part. You are going to help us sing after the first verse and the fifth verse. Now you only have four verses in there, we have five, so just pretend that there's one in between two and three.
celebrations and our concerns. Uh, first of all, we offer prayers for Jean Sheen, as offered by Marsha Sheen, who are down in Florida. Uh, we pray for their well-being. We also have prayers at this time, and I don't even know how to, uh, to put this, for whomever died um, and the incident just down the road on Bridge Lane uh, last night. Um, I, we woke up to that news this morning, and I don't even know what else to say. Um, prayers for whomever was involved in that incident, and um, I, I just don't know what else to say about that. But um, as things become clearer, we can continue those prayers next weekend. Are there any other joys or concerns or celebrations that you would like to share from the pews at this time? Okay. So then we also take this opportunity of just a few moments of silence uh, to be with Jesus in the midst of our public worship, uh, to see him and to hear him in the privacy of our own souls and to feel his prayer for us. This is a love hard to imagine, but is nonetheless the foundation of our Christian faith. It is this kind of love that lets us trust that God hears our prayers and watches over us, and that Jesus is close at hand, even when it seems like our prayers are not being heard. Let us be thankful for these opportunities to be heard and to also listen for Jesus. Please join me now in reciting the prayer that Jesus himself has taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we share our gifts today to help support the work of this congregation and also our work through one great hour of sharing, which is collected throughout the United Church of Christ, we celebrate Christ's love and abundance in this world. In our generosity, we recognize that we are all part of God's one family. In our giving, we dare to imagine that Jesus will use our gifts in the world to do wondrous things, even more than we can imagine. So let us give now as generously as we possibly may.
offer to you, so that our offerings may reach wherever you would have us go, to far corners of the world, to people that we will never meet, to accomplish things that we will never know, so that we can imagine things that are even greater than we can think. May these gifts help you and help us. And we ask that your blessings rest upon all of these people who have given generously to this cause. Amen. Please join now as we sing together in the blue hymnal number 211, Jesus Walked This Lonesome Valley. The light has come into the world, 
but people love darkness rather than that light, because their deeds were wicked. Everyone who practices evil hates the light. He does not come near it for fear his, de his deeds will be exposed. But he who acts in truth comes into the light to make clear that his deeds are done in God's name. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. I don't know if you were able to see, but I, I caught that adorable picture of a little two-year-old Parker Curry staring in complete awe at the portrait of First Lady Michelle Obama down in the National Gallery in Washington, D.C. And her mother just wanted the little girl to turn around so that she could take a picture of her standing there in front of the portrait. But it was like the girl was so captivated by how beautiful Mrs. Obama was that it's like her mother's voice just disappeared. She couldn't hear it. And so the mother kept saying, turn around, turn around. But she just kept looking at that picture. Now, there was a stranger next in line, Ben Hines. And he was watching this whole display between Parker Curry and her mother, Jessica. And he's the one who now took that famous picture of the little girl looking up at the portrait of Mrs. Obama, so captivated that everything else disappeared. And he posted it on Facebook, and it went viral. Michelle Obama, because it went viral, she came to hear about all of this, and she has an office right there in Washington, D.C. as well. And so she invited that little girl and her mother to come over to the office. And you may have seen the video. They had like this little dance party in her office. And then Mrs. Obama told that little two-year-old Parker, keep on dreaming big for yourself, and maybe one day I'll proudly look up at a portrait of you. Now that girl was impressed by Michelle Obama, and Michelle Obama then took that as an opportunity to try to inspire that girl so that she would accomplish great things in her own life. Now today we share one of the most familiar of all New Testament passages, for God so loved the world that he gave his own son. This memorable teaching is found in the context of the Nicodemus story. And Nicodemus was a much respected Pharisee. He was a much respected religious teacher. And Jesus is a carpenter from Nazareth. And so he comes out to Jesus, but in nighttime, in the cover of darkness, because he is so well known. What is he doing going to talk to Jesus, this carpenter from up in Nazareth? So he goes under the cloak of darkness. And in their conversation, Jesus and Nicodemus, we hear another well-known passage. And Jesus says to Nicodemus, you must be born again. And these are words of renewal. This is Jesus talking about a refreshed spirituality. Not one that just follows the law. Not one that just has to do what you're supposed to do. But one that feels a personal connection to God. One filled with vigor and enthusiasm. One lived in the light. Not one sneaking around in the darkness like Nicodemus had done. One in which our faith is so important to us that it's almost like being born again. He was challenging Nicodemus to move beyond his fears and his own expectations because Jesus was not what the law expected, but there he was. And so he's challenging Nicodemus, let go of your expectations and try to follow God's expectations and allow it for a new beginning to unfold. And just like our physical births begin a whole process of growth, so should our spiritual rebirths. But then, in this whole conversation about coming out of darkness into the light, being born again, Jesus throws in something completely unexpected. He talks about the cross. When Jesus is lifted high, in other words, when he's raised up on the beam of that cross and lifted up on that mountain so that all can see him as they're entering Jerusalem, as Jesus is sitting there all by himself up on that cross, like that last hymn said that Jesus had to do it all by himself, all by himself up on that cross, then we will understand what a spiritually renewed life is all about. He points to the cross, to his death, as a, as a way to explain what living is all about. Poor Nicodemus. This guy is only doing his best to try and understand who this Jesus is. At least he went to Jesus. Even if under cover of darkness, at least he went to Jesus trying to figure out, can he be the Messiah? He's already so confused about this talk about being born again. And now Jesus tries to explain being born again, this whole idea of Christian life. And he points to the cross and to his own upcoming death. This is because for Jesus, 
The cross is not about death and dying. The cross instead is the greatest, most profound statement that his whole life can ever make of for God so loved the world that he gave his own son. You know, sometimes I think we forget what that implies. You know, God is up in heaven. The, the all-powerful God is up in heaven. And if any of you are parents, just think about what that means when we say that God gave his own son. Who of us would ever sacrifice their child uh, for something as, as grand as this or for something petty? Who would ever think about having to sacrifice a child like that? But it says that God gave his own son because he loves us even more than he loves himself. And that cross, therefore, stands for a kind of a message of love that I think is beyond our imagination. It is something that we have to try to appreciate and come more and more to the light to try to understand more and more about life, that this kind of a God is the God that we come to worship every week. That this is the God who loves us even more than he loves himself. The cross is Jesus' complete loving commitment to each and every one of us. And not only to the ones who say Jesus is Lord, but even to the ones who put him on the cross. So Jesus comes for all people, the ones who believe and the ones who do not, because Jesus loves us all. Just like a parent is very impressed when a child does well, but a parent is also there when their kid is in jail and they go to visit the kid in jail. We love the children no matter what. God loves us no matter what. That is that message of the cross, that unconditional love. And that is what Christian life is supposed to be. It is a huge challenge for all of us. So when we look up at that cross, it should be a little bit like Parker Curry looking up at the First Lady's portrait. We should be captivated by that image of our God on the cross because he so loved the world that he gave his only son. And then, like Parker Curry, when she actually met the First Lady, Michelle Obama, encouraged her to keep on dreaming big for yourself, so should Jesus on the cross inspire us to spiritual greatness in how we are going to live. It's not about death. It's about how we are going to live. The cross is not about the end of our lives. The cross is about our lives, period. The cross is about how we are going to make a difference in the world. The cross is Jesus saying to us, keep on dreaming big for yourself. Don't think only in small terms. Think in those huge terms of God so loved the world. Don't let our fears and our own limitations, you know, hamper us in that. We must be more than we can imagine. You know, I've been posting a daily sentence or two on the church's Facebook page. And I've been basing it on the UCC lectionary because every day they have three different readings that they would like us to turn to. And this past week we were asked to think about a message that was found in Psalm 84. And one of our choir members, I won't mention the name, but the initials are Ed Keith, right there in the front row, he replied with a link to a recording of this psalm. And the psalm was beautiful and it was being chanted by the choir at Exeter Cathedral in England. And it's absolutely beautiful. And as you listen, and I listen to the whole thing, they have different pictures of that building, and it's a magnificent structure. And one of the pictures was of a sarcophagus, a tomb with a carving of the person that's buried there, um, you know, cut in stone above it. And I sent a question back to Ed, and I asked, tongue in cheek, I said, you know, who's that dead guy? You know, you got all these beautiful pictures of stained glass windows, bell towers, beautiful cathedral architecture. I said, who's the dead guy? And so Ed replies, it's Bishop Oldham. So, trying to be a wise guy, I sent another message to Ed, and I told Ed, I said, I want one of those sarcophagi for me someday at the Congregational Church. <laughs> now, in a heartbeat, Ed answers me immediately. I'm joking about my death being buried in a sarcophagus. But Ed, I don't know what's going on here today, but Ed's reply is instantaneous, and he says, done. <laughs> now... <laughs> Now I'm a little bit scared about this whole idea that he's already planning for my burial. <laughs> but joking aside, the sarcophagus is in that sanctuary to remind people of that bishop, bishop's example and to hopefully inspire them to live more spiritually because of it. The sarcophagus is not there to point to death. The sarcophagus is there to point to life. It's not a testimony of death. It's a symbol of life and being more than we can even imagine. So Jesus says to us today in the Gospel that the Son is not sent into the world to condemn, but instead to save. And this means that we must work with Jesus to try and help save ourselves and save others. 
Jesus' example is perfect and complete. There's nothing more that we can add to God's part of the story. Jesus even died. God gave everything that he could, even his own son, so that we could face life and have unlimited possibilities. That's why the cross is Jesus' last testimony that God so loved the world. Now, we have to find our inspiration in Jesus' cross so that we can continue Jesus' work in our world. And it is in that spirit that I'd like to share with you a prayer by the assassinated Bishop Oscar Romero, who stood up to powers that be, even to the point that they shot him to death in his church. It is included in the church's worship ideas for today's one great hour of sharing. And this is the prayer of Bishop Oscar Romero. It helps now and then to step back and take a long view. The kingdom is not only beyond our effort, it is even beyond our vision. We accomplish in our lifetime only a tiny fraction of the magnificent enterprise that is God's work. Nothing we do is complete, which is a way of saying that the kingdom is always something that lies beyond us. No statement says all that can be said. No prayer fully expresses our faith. No confession brings perfection. No pastoral visit brings wholeness. No program accomplishes the church's mission. No set of goals and objectives includes everything. This is what we are about. We plant the seeds that one day will grow. We water seeds already planted knowing that they hold future promise. We lay foundations that will need further development. We provide yeast that produces far beyond our own capabilities. We cannot do everything, and there is a sense of liberation in realizing that. This enables us to do something, and to do it very well. It may be incomplete, but it is a beginning, a step along the way, an opportunity for the Lord's grace to enter and to do the rest. We may never see the end results. That is the difference. So may we be born again. May we find awe and excitement and wonder like that little girl, Parker Curry, as she looked up at Michelle Obama's portrait. May we find that in our faith lives as we look up at Jesus on the cross. May we so moved by God, so love the world, that we share and do what we can on this one great hour of sharing Sunday, realizing that we can't do everything, but that we have to do something, so that in Jesus Christ, we may be more than we can even imagine. In his name we pray. Amen. So now please join as we sing our ascending hymn from the blue hymnal number 436, Shalom to you now.
And uh, I will be going tomorrow to Frontier Cable Access Television to uh, edit that and to uh, have it ready for them. And uh, they were then able to put it up on uh, their YouTube page. So if you go to fcat.tv, uh, that can be seen anywhere. And also I'll be sharing that with Jonathan Novak. And John Novak will then be able to put it up on Hatfield Cable Access Television as well. And we're going to try to do that every other Sunday. So if you would like to help uh, in that by uh, being one of the persons that mans the camera or woman's the camera, as the case may be, uh, please do talk to me. We have three volunteers at, at present, which is only once every six weeks. Uh, so if you could uh, volunteer, we can stretch that out a little bit more. And if you're going to be in church anyway, it's just a matter of kind of pointing the camera where it needs to go. Um, we're kind of thinking of this as an outreach to uh, let other people know about what goes on here at Hatfield Congregational and to extend an invitation to them because sometimes it's hard to come through those doors as your first step. But we're hoping that if they see what goes on here, uh, maybe they'll feel a little bit more welcome and a little bit apprehensive about stepping through those doors for the first time. So if you can help in any way with that, um, you know, please speak to me. Also, we are now turning to the benediction response in our bulletin for our closing prayer. God sent Jesus that the world may believe. God sends us into that world to share Jesus' proclamation and to continue his work. Let everyone see the light that we have received here in God's house. Live openly, so share this good news. Christ is your We are alive together in Christ Jesus. He offers to all the hope of eternal life and also the promise of a purpose-filled life here and now. By grace, we have been empowered by God to share the love of Christ. So let us go forth in that power to share the love and the light of Jesus' good news.